Hey Nate here, and uh, what you see is just some PBR materials I have added to the light engine. And if you haven't already, there's the basic setup video that'll describe how to set things up. And then this is a continuation, and we're gonna end up with what you see here with a emissive texture, and then these the shadow caster and background, which uses some tile layers to to render the PBR lighting. So here I have the basic setup project. I haven't done anything different to it yet. And I'm just gonna delete these shadow casters and we're gonna add some PBR materials. So I have a folder already set up. I've got, got some materials and normal maps and albedo set up. And if we look at one of these materials, they're packed together. So the metallic roughness and ambient occlusion are all in the same map. And you don't need an extra program to do that, although some you could probably specify, but the light engine comes with a program to do that. So if you have just like the basic images all separate, it'll you can pack them yourself. It's really easy. It's just drag and drop. And then same with the normal map. If you want emissive textures, you can see the alpha is different on this one. So the, the higher alphas mean there's emissives and the lower is just going to act as a normal map. And you can see this one's not emissive, so it's just default. So... So you can take these, I'm gonna drop them in the sprites folder. Hope Game Maker can do it. Yep. Let's get rid of. We don't need all of them showing. So t first, I'm gonna make just a shadow caster with this pirate texture. So you see the albedo is just just some color with a little little bit of the image there. So uh, we'll create an object, and I'm gonna call it pirate or scene. I don't use OBJ or any of those prefixes for objects because it's, it's just messy and unorganized. So uh, if I inherit, I'm going to inherit from a sh one of the shadow casters. This is a rectangle, so pretty pretty simple. Then I'm going to give the sprite index itself, the albedo, and then over here on the variables tab, it had inherited all these from the, uh, the shadow object. And defaults none, of course. And we have a map, so we're going to check that one. These other options are going to give it a full image material. Uh, it's best for placeholder purposes. It's better to have a, a map or something, but it, it works in a pinch. So, so we have ha we have map. We're going to give it the pirate material, and I'm going to give it the pirate normal. So that's it for setting it up. These other two options, uh, shadow depth is whether it's going to be like towards the camera or away and that's going to affect the whether the shadow hits it or not so if it's at zero it's basically on the ground and all the shadows are going to hit it and you, you can adjust it in the middle so maybe you want the shadow to not fully affect the object and same emissive strength that's where i showed those emissive textures if you don't have an emissive texture in your normal and you just hit it to one it'll still work and it'll just be a full image emissive so so it, the options there um, so anyway, that's created and of course these textures were huge. So as you can see, it's it's pretty big so <laughs> Instead of making separate textures or whatnot. Uh, this you know, this is just a tutorial. So I'm just gonna scale them down manually And that should work The other thing to check since this is these are HD textures uh, We want to make sure interplay between colors is on you don't have to do that. It looks better when you have higher resolution. When you have pixel art, it's the opposite. You don't want that because you want to keep those crisp, crisp edges. So that's added. And of course, it's gonna we're gonna run it. I just added uh, about what ten to eight different HD textures, so it's gonna have to redo the texture maps here or texture groups. And once those are done, should be good. There you go. Uh, looks pretty nice. Uh, if we had set up a camera, we could zoom in and look a lot nicer, and we wouldn't have to have it scaled down like it is. But so that's just a basic shadow caster with a PBR texture as its image. And and in another video, I'll probably go over all the different types because you can do shapes and textures and polygons and all that stuff. And and another thing, when it compiled those there, Game Maker has recently. This is just a side note. Um, actually, if you go to texture groups you can see the the different compression now and if you do just QOI and run it it should it should launch a lot quicker yeah see and 
that's just just something useful to know that they have recently added so then the next I'm going to set up is the tile maps so this this background here this ground I'm going to turn into actual PBR I'm going to use these, these this rocky texture so and I like to keep the tile maps separate so I'll throw these into the tile oops into the tile folder and these are huge <laughs> just like the pirate one and for these I do I do want to resize them I'll make them 256 and for tile maps you you do need let's see apply um it needs to be two tiles wide so you have your your empty tile on the on the left apply so I doubled the width and there you go so the the when you make a tile map that empty side is going to be the left and I will do the same these are the material they all just need to match so 256 make sure it works and double it and one more time for the normal map okay so those are all ready to be shoved into a tile map so now we can create those and grab the sprite so we'll do the albedo first tile rocky albedo and they are 256 by 256 so there we have a tile map and I will just duplicate it and change out the names and the sprites which are quick and easy and the normal map so e each tile map you're gonna need three different tile maps I'm sure you could you could come up with a funky way to put it in all one but this is this is probably the, the easier cleaner way to do it so we got the three tile maps they're all good to go we can actually close that and the ground we'll get rid of the ground I don't need it so this one I will do tile rocky uh, tiles rocky okay and I think I'll draw it first just to show a <laughs> what it shouldn't look like I suppose or the wrong way to do it so this is basically we just swapped the ground we had before with another image and run it we're gonna be able to see you know eh, it's a it's got a texture to it but it's it's not PBR it's not doing all the fancy lighting and stuff so um, what I'm gonna show here to set up the other layers the, the albedo you just leave like I just did but then you, you what you have to set up is the other layers that's gonna they're gonna draw to separate surfaces and they're gonna get um, composited in the when it does the deferred rendering so um, the, their defaults here normal begin normal end material begin material end you don't have to do a begin and an end in fact if it only finds one or the other it'll it'll put the layer scripts on that single layer for begin and end so it's kind of up to you uh, the reason you use a begin and end is sometimes you might want five or six different tile maps drawing and so you need to tell it where to start and where to stop the background it goes with the default and what the background layer does is it, it excludes it so that it's not lit because typically you want the background to be like a sky backdrop or something like that and it it wouldn't make sense for a shadow or light to go hit the sky which doesn't exactly catch shadow if you think about it so for these other ones I'm just gonna do the one layer normal begin and I'll give it the tile for the normal and then I'll do normal end and, and it doesn't even have to be a tile layer it just has to be a layer so you, you could make an asset layer object layer whichever you want um, oh why did I name it that way this needs to be material my bad okay so material there we go material begin so I'm just leaving out the ends for now it doesn't matter and if we well we shouldn't run it yet and what I need to do is just duplicate so add in the material add in hide that one there we go it helps to hide these so you can see what you're doing and 
it's if you keep them hidden, that's fine. When it goes and adds the layer script, it's going to re-enable them, or you're you're not going to see them actually drawn ever. So, so now if we run it, we will see. Now it's got a nice PBR texture background. Pretty simple, pretty easy. So, the next part, uh, I want to do this lava one and see. This one's pretty big. Um, I'm going to reduce it in half just for, or no, I'll scale it down when I do it. So, all right, so I'll do another object. And this one's going to be the same as the pirate, actually. I just want to show off, like, how to do the uh, uh, emissive texture. And I'm going to treat it as a, a background instead of the, instead of the uh, shadow caster. So, uh, so that means we need to inherit from light engine game there we go so there's ellie game and ellie game texture ellie's for light engine game is just this generic at the top of the inheritance of you know objects that need to be rendered with uh, pbr so we'll give it the sprite the albedo and it's this, as you can see it's it's literally the same thing as the shadow caster the big difference is the shadow caster, which we can I'll show real quick in the create. It actually adds a shadow to the to the vertex buffer. So, and if we look at the create for the lava, it doesn't any, do any of that. It just checks the normal and emissive and gives it a value. So, so this one's the same material. Sure, we have a material, and we have lava material, lava normal. And the emissive strength, I kind of want to oscillate it, but at first I'm just going to pump it up all the way to one. So shadow depth, it's still considered the ground. We'll leave it there. And in fact, just to make things clear, oh, I already have, I need to delete the ground. Just to make things clear, I'll have a ground layer with a submissive one. So as you can see, it's huge. <laughs> and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'll scale it down to, well, that's too small. I'll do, that's not bad. Okay. And there we go. I'll run that. So we should have emissive texture on the ground. There we go. It's even when, see when the shadow's in it, it's still shiny lighted lit pixels etc so to make it oscillate uh, i'm gonna give it a timing variable and then change the emissive strength over time using a sine wave and make sure to inherit the if you're gonna if you can alter the create event make sure to inherit the uh, previous one so and we'll just time equals zero and in the step event this is where i'm going to oscillate it do time plus equals, I don't know, 0 0.1. It's probably going to be too fast, but that's fine. And then the emissive strength, uh, and if you look again, remember it's it's also on the variable tab. That's where that's coming from. Uh, we're going to change it to 0 0.2 times sine. And this one's going to oscillate so that it it's going to go all the way up to 1, but then the minimum it'll be, I think it'll be like 0 0.6. I could graph it out or something, but it'll work. And then the emissive strength needs, remember it's baked together with the normal map. So we have this other variable, normal. And then this function, there's a lot of built-in functions that there'll be documentation on. So color make emissive is, it's gonna combine some values to tell the shader, hey, it has a normal map and hey, here's the emissive strength. So uh, we, could, we could say true, cause it has a normal map. But there's also has normal map because you know maybe it doesn't. Um, if it doesn't have a normal map and you want emissive, you, you need to. You can still have that. You don't have to have a normal map. It'll just do a full image anyway. So, and then emissive string. So we're oscillating the actual value and we're re reassigning it to the color of the normal map, and then. If you look where it draws a normal map, that's where it uses it. So the shadow depth and the normal are 
the normal is basically just a color value that goes to the uh, the vertex color and it's red in the shader is some properties so so with that if I run it we should see there we go it's oscillating kind of fast uh, maybe oops turn that down a bit to zero eh, half of that 0 0.5 there we go it's kind of fading in and out nice nice sine wave oscillation so uh, that's it for this tutorial there'll be some other ones that cover some of the some of the other tricks that you can do with the emissives and there's particles and lit particles that also that also are done by the engine automatically you can see we got a whole particle system set up that uses the built-in it's pretty nice so